Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today we are continuing on with drawing your guys' OCs basically for every Wednesday in December. If you want more information, you can check out this video right here. But for now, we are going to be starting off with this character. So this character is from Jordan Tom Smith. There's no information on the character from the description, so I'm purely going off of what I can see from the reference. So to kind of start off with the drawings for today, I am going to be doing two different ones that I've been pulling from Instagram, but I will show you kind of like bonus footage of another one if you remember from last week's video, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. So for this one, I am starting off with basically a 5 by 7 canvas, which is what I mostly use whenever I do these kinds of drawings or if I just like to draw in general. I just use that kind of canvas size. So for the brush, I'm using my painting brush because it's a little bit more broader and doesn't really taper, which makes it a lot easier for me to plan out things in a more general sense. And I don't get too caught up on trying to do too many details. So you can see that I was trying to figure out the composition and the posing of the character. So I wanted to include both the ears and the tail and as much of the torso as I could because I do like the outfit even though I did have a little bit of a hard time kind of interpreting the character a little bit. From like previous sessions where I've done drawing your OCs videos, I haven't done too many gotcha OCs, which is what I believe this is from. And gotcha characters tend to have more of a chibi-esque style and things tend to be even more simplified. And it's a little bit more of interpreting a little bit of the character's details and stuff that people have put. So I do apologize that if anything of this character is kind of incorrect, it's just based on what I've interpreted from the reference. So there's like one particular part that gets me a little bit confused, which is kind of pertaining more to the clothing on the right side, but we'll get on to that once we actually start to color. For now, let's talk about the sketching. So after I've done kind of like the general posing, composition, kind of just general planning to get a feel either of the character or the pose or whatever, I dim down that general kind of sketch and then make a new layer on top and switch over to my sketching round brush that I like to use. And all the brushes that I use are from the Jing Sketches kind of uh, brush set. I just kind of modified them to my own preferences. But basically this is like my favorite brush that I like to use whenever I have to do what I would consider like my cleaner sketch or just like general sketching and for most of my drawings anyways. So this allows me to kind of get more into the details but I don't really have to place too many guidelines at this point just because the general sketch or the rough sketch which I did with the bigger brush is kind of laying out that groundwork for myself. Even though a lot of the times I kind of deviate a little bit away from that general sketching and kind of just, you know, go from where I think might fit better at that point. So sometimes I need extra layers to help me plan things. Sometimes I use less or disregard my previous rough sketch, but for the most part, I follow it somewhat closely if I'm confused about a pose or anything like that. So for this particular character, I did really like the color palette first of all. I don't draw, like I said, a lot of gotcha characters, but I also don't draw a lot of characters that have ears and a tail or kind of more of this darker aesthetic kind of, I don't know how to explain it. Um, I do apologize that a little bit later it is going to be hard to see some of the details just because my camera hates picking up such a higher contrast between like black or like really dark colors and my screen. So it might be really hard to see whenever I'm going to be coloring or rendering the black clothing. So I probably will skip through that or like kind of chop up the footage to the point where you probably won't see too much of that being colored just because it kind of just looks like a black void. But for the most part, I really like the aesthetic of this character and I like the kind of heterochromia in the eyes plus the kind of like one's a cat eye and the other one has like a pattern kind of like in place of the the pupil where the pupil would be. So I kind of wanted to play around with that a little bit. I don't know anything like the age of the character or like the general demeanor of the character, I guess. So I did have to do that as kind of like just my general interpretation. So I kind of came up with this pose. I know the arm looks a little wonky, same with the hand. For some reason, I think the hands for today, like in general for both 
of the pieces that I did for today are kind of poorly drawn, so I do apologize. But hopefully me using a reference for the last one will actually help out. So yeah, basically today I'll do like kind of two and a half drawings that I'm going to be showing you guys. But I did three drawings in total. So for coloring. I have switched over and made a new layer to kind of like prep myself with a background. Now because these characters that I have for this one and the next one, I did not really... I don't know, like I had a hard time thinking of a background that was more appropriately placed for them. So instead I did more of a color blocky kind of background for them. So for this one, I decided to pick two colors from the character's color palette, kind of lay it out in a kind of like an overlapping layout. I'll add a grid a little bit later, but I thought it'd be a nice way to kind of make the character pop from the background a little bit easier just because of the color selection and it won't make things a little bit too busy. So yeah, the backgrounds for these ones are definitely much more simple. Otherwise, if I knew a little bit more of the character or like, you know, the potential story of the character or anything like that, then I could probably place them in, in kind of like an environment. Hopefully that makes sense. So after that, I went ahead and blocked out the entirety of the character in one color. And usually I like to pick the skin tone and then we can actually color the skin. And then we can move on to the eyes, then the hair usually. And then after that is the clothing and any accessories or anything that kind of goes along with the outfit. And that's kind of like my workflow for the most part. I kind of treat skin as kind of like the lower, the bottom layer, I guess, of everything whenever I color. So I do proceed with doing the skin first because the eyes will cover the skin, the hair will cover the skin, and the clothing will cover the skin. So it makes it a little bit easier for me to work in that way because I don't have to be too clean whenever I have to do the skin because every other kind of like subsequent color or place that I need to place color will cover up the skin. So that's why I usually start with skin and not like any other part of the drawing of the character. So hopefully that makes sense too because sometimes I don't know if my workflow is like consistent with other people's workflow but that's kind of how I view it for the most part. So you can see that I'm kind of blocking in that same way that I said. And for the clothing, I like to kind of chunk out different things. So if there is one giant main color, let's say for this character, it's mostly black. I will try my best to keep the lighting in mind and block everything out. And with the lighting in mind, I can kind of shift from dark to light. Or if I'm working like with a white or a lighter color, sometimes I go from light to dark. So it just kind of depends on how I'm feeling about the color and I will kind of dictate whether or not I move from dark to light or light to dark. But I do like to keep it in mind so that I don't make things look too blocky if I end up kind of blocking every chunk of clothing one at a time rather than doing them in larger chunks and kind of letting them overlap because it just kind of fills the space a little bit more nicely instead of leaving gaps of like white or whatever my base color was. I'm now placing a grid into the background just because I wanted to break up the space a little bit and play around with the colors and the color blocks would have looked fine on their own but I kind of wanted to vary it up just a little bit just because uh, a few other drawings that I've done kind of like more recently at the end of November to the beginning of December I drew a lot of plaid so I really like the grid kind of patterning for the most part but uh so there are going to be some parts of the process where I feel like I've either super condensed everything or I've completely cut out. So I do recommend there's like other videos like my start to finish or even some of my ASMR ones that I usually show more of the transitioning of each step a little bit more clearly. So I've already changed the sketch color to be a little bit more softer around the face and a little bit more appropriately colored kind of like to match the object that's surrounding. So I would have changed the line art to be a little bit darker for the clothing, a little bit softer for the face and the hair. And then after that, I did a little bit of lighting. So I did very soft kind of rim lighting for his outfit and his kind of face and hair coming from the right side, just to make it a little bit more interesting in terms of not making everything look completely flat. After that, I went ahead and merged everything and we are already on the rendering stage, which is just me basically cleaning up and sharpening things and kind of like more or less getting rid of all those scrappy lines that you see kind of like floating around everywhere. 
but generally I think even though I only included two for today's video and usually I've included like three and I usually keep them a little bit more sketchy and more of a headshot because I'm deciding that I'm gonna do probably two and maybe three if I have more time but I would like to spend more time to get them kind of like up to a certain finish for the most part but a lot of these are going to be a little bit more sketchy compared to my actual finished artwork just because I do want to get through as many as I can throughout the month without getting too burnt out so I do apologize that these are not like fully fully rendered but they are a lot more cleaned up compared to some previous ones because I was gonna debate and kind of just do them in more of a sketchier way and just like kind of like semi cleaned up but for the most part I was able to clean up these ones a fair amount so they look more or less finished and kind of to finish this one off I put a drop shadow changed it to kind of a dark muted almost like a purple burgundy color that's hard to see and probably reads very black anyways and I think that's it for this character so we're gonna go ahead and do the time-lapse replay I'll show you guys the actual time-lapse at the very end so or like at the end of the session not the end of this video so you can see the colors a little bit more accurately because this on my iPad's very hard to see the difference even in the blacks in his kind of jacket to his kind of like vest kind of clothing and his shirt so it is a bit hard to see i think for the most part all of these drawings took around i think two-ish hours for each of them so yeah here's the first one for today's session it's a little bit warmer you can see and i'll see you guys when we get to the next one So moving on to the second one, we have this really cute persona from Starry Mari Art and I am easily gravitating towards very vibrant kind of color palettes more recently and I feel like this is quite evident also in a lot of the characters that I tend to pick whenever I do the draw your OCs challenge but I also try to vary it up so I don't draw the same kind of, I guess like I don't want to draw similar character aesthetics all the time so I kind of thought this one would be very fun to do. I really love the kind of more monochromatic top, but also very vibrant, cute hair color of kind of like this purple, I guess like pinkish purple hair, which I kind of challenged myself to draw because drawing super curly hair or more textured hair is a little bit more challenging for me. And drawing something that has a little bit more of that, or I guess like coloring, kind of that more vibrant color. Sometimes I don't want to make it to the point where it feels like it's burning your retinas or anything like that. So I did want to try my best to make the color pop, but I also wanted to take the texture of the hair into consideration as much as I could as well. So I'm kind of going to try to balance that. And for the most part, I think the majority of the time for this drawing actually went into just trying to figure out how to do the hair to the best of my ability because I do rely a lot on lines and drawing and I feel like that's kind of evident because I also favor drawing and sketching the most probably and then coloring is also fun but I do rely heavily on having some kind of structure made up from lines so I kind of knew I didn't really want to approach the hair in a way that I would have to draw every strand because it might get too busy and from previous sessions where I've drawn more tighter curls or like I guess like more towards 4c hair I believe I am trying my best to learn to kind of block out the silhouette a little bit add a little bit of texture but I'm gonna rely a lot on coloring and blocking it in via colors and values rather than through lines which I'm trying my best to get better at but I feel like this one still got a little bit too busy but we'll get to that actually when we actually get to the color so like I mentioned earlier the hands are a little bit atrocious in terms of how I drew them so I do apologize about that but for the pose I was initially going to make her look like she was leaning on her hands in a more like you know like here's my face kind of cute resting head on hands pose 
um, but I ended up not shifting her head low enough and I did not angle her hands in a way that made sense where her head would comfortably lay on the position of her hands. So I did it more kind of like mid, kind of like in a laugh kind of thing. So like she's raising her hands a little bit, bringing it up to her face, but I don't think it came across that way. So yeah, it might be the reason why it's kind of like in that awkward positioning. So in terms of the background, I did something very similar, but I was a little bit more hesitant in terms of the color combinations that I wanted to use just because of the color palette of the character in general. I struggle sometimes matching purple of this color to other colors because I don't want to always pair it with like darker purples or vibrant pinks or kind of like more darker blues which I feel like are too obvious but I feel like in a combo that I don't really use a lot but I do like the aesthetic of is kind of pairing green with purple and I am using the color kind of similar to the one that Mari used in her artwork and I do like the kind of color between her eyes, the background, and her hair which gave me the confidence to be able to use green in the background for this piece as well because for the most part there's mostly only green in her eyes so it's kind of nice to kind of distribute that elsewhere as well so hopefully it works out for my piece. I don't know if it looks too off sometimes because I stare at the piece for so long that I can't tell if something looks like too unnatural or too um, off, if that makes sense. So yeah, you can let me know if the green background threw it off or not because I kept it very pastel so it matches a little bit easier, but that's just me kind of being timid with my color choices if anything. But in terms of the coloring process, I basically followed everything the same way. So after I did the background, I'll drop in the grid at later on at some point. But I blocked in the character in one color, which kind of became the skin tone. And then after that, I'll work from skin to eyes to hair back to clothing. And I spent a heck of a lot of time trying to figure out how I wanted to block in the hair texture before I get to rendering because I kind of like being able to set myself up in a way that makes rendering a little bit easier for me just because rendering takes the most amount of my time in terms of finishing a piece. So if I can do a bulk of the coloring and you know figuring out form and everything during the coloring phase then it just gives me a little bit less work later so i've tried my best to do it but we're gonna have to do a lot of like work during the rendering for the hair so please bear with what it looks like right now so yeah one little last thing i wanted to do just to make things a little bit easier just because i did end up coloring the stripes of her i guess like arm sleeve things. I don't know what you call these because they're basically similar to leg warmers but it's for your arms but I don't know if you call them arm warmers but I used the multiply on a separate layer to do the shadows for it just to make it a little bit easier because I didn't color the kind of like sleeve area as one color with shading and then add in the stripes later. So to avoid me having to go back and forth, I just wanted to use one multiply layer to apply a shadow to all of it. And then after that, I added a little bit of a shadow between her hands, her kind of like clavicle area and her head so that it looks like it's kind of pushed back. After that, we went ahead and kind of changed the sketch color to be a lot softer before I commit to merging my layers and we can get started with rendering. So yeah, I think this is the part where I've kind of stalled in terms of my process because I was a little bit timid in terms of wanting to actually start rendering. So like I said, I'm going to try my best to practice this more eventually um, because I would like to get more comfortable being able to draw more textured hair, especially much more curly like tighter curls I guess for hair because I can definitely draw ringlets and you know kind of like those I guess like ojo sama kind of ringlet of hairs which feels very like drill like I can definitely do those because it's like very similar to paper or ribbons but whenever we get to smaller tighter curls I feel like I need a better understanding on how to simplify the form before I can actually get to detail and yeah, this is just a good learning opportunity for me, so I'm gonna keep trying my best to 
if I have the opportunity to draw more of these types of characters who have, you know, tighter curls or different textured hair in the future. So yeah, please excuse my probably very poor way of drawing it. So yeah. So in terms of the rendering, I did keep the face kind of simple and I tried my best to do this for both this character and the previous character because sometimes I've noticed that I overdo it a little bit with the face in terms of adding so much shadow and blush and everything that it makes things look too warm. So I tried my best to kind of dial it back just a bit and it kind of helps keep the face looking a little bit more simple and clear and it makes it a little bit easier for myself as well to kind of clean up and render things. And like I said, majority of my time went to rendering the hair, so it's gonna still be quite messy, but hopefully it comes out looking all right in the end. So yeah, as we kind of just work on the rendering portion, let me talk about the last drawing that I'm gonna do just because it'll go by super quickly because I did not record a lot of footage for it but if you remember from last week's video I believe on Saturday I did two characters and I believe it's the first character that I did that has like white hair kind of has a nice teal red white and black kind of aesthetic and it's a character playing like a teal flute and I basically really, really struggled liking that piece and I struggled also just working on that piece in general. So I decided that I wanted to do a redemption or a redo because I'm not happy with that attempt, I guess, of the character. So I really wanted to kind of try my best to do another version. So I will have kind of like snippet footage of it at the very end and I can talk about kind of like my thoughts and decisions a little bit and I'll show you guys the comparison at the very end because the newer version turned out a lot better and I do know why but it's also depends heavily on my mood at the time or my environment or how to explain it like if I feel like I'm strapped for time I'm going to rush stuff if I feel like I have more time or I can take my time I tend to have more fun with the piece so I feel like even though I spent a lot longer on the first one and kind of had a similar time constraint as today's session I did not like that piece at all and I feel like it came through or like I didn't enjoy drawing it at the time even though I liked the character I was kind of excited to draw a different pose of like a person playing an instrument and stuff because I don't do that often I dreaded drawing it for some reason and it definitely came out showing that I guess so yeah today's session for that one is gonna turn out a lot better but I also had a lot more fun doing that one so yeah I, it's kind of sad that Sometimes my mood influences how much care I take into drawing something in general, which kind of sucks, but you know, it's just how it's going to be. And I feel like I should have realized that I should have just stopped working on that piece and then maybe came back to it at a later time. So, you know, just kind of like a little mental note for myself. If I want to salvage a piece at a certain point, I should probably just stop and move on rather than continuing to fight it. I'm trying to think what else. For this character, yeah, I kind of wish I went back to the previous pose of her resting her head on her hands and I would have liked to bring up her knees potentially. She is wearing a dress but I could have included a little bit of the dress a little bit more to incorporate a little bit more of that red into the entire illustration and that probably would have influenced my color choices for the background too because the only places of red is like at the very bottom of the drawing for me and then her nails. Oh, I should have probably also mentioned this. The reason why I wanted to kind of display her hands in kind of like more of the center of the drawing or just like to show them off a little bit more in general is that I wanted to show off her nails and her rings because I like when characters have accessories. So if I have the chance to, I like to incorporate them into the drawing. So like if the character has earrings on one side, I tend to like making them face the one side so you can see it. So in this case, this character has a lot of rings. They have pretty red long nails. So I wanted to show them off, but I also didn't want to cover the 
pretty necklace that she was wearing. So I ended up with a really weird, awkward pose, but overall it's so technically how I wanted to draw it. So yeah, maybe it's okay. Oh, one last thing that I wanted to do, and I think it's quite cute in this kind of style. So in Mari's art, she has like little glitter or sparkles everywhere on the hair and the outfit. So I decided to do the same for this character. And I think it just adds that little oomph of cuteness to it. So I wanted to do the same. But here is the time-lapse replay. Thank you both to Jordan and Mari for submitting your OCs and allowing me to draw them. I'll definitely be selecting more from the Instagram tag. So if you want to know the Instagram tag, feel free to look at the previous video if you would like. And I'll be picking more throughout the rest of December. And I'm still kind of debating whether or not I'm going to be doing some chibi versions of people's OCs and doing a gigantic like canvas filled with them. I will only do it if I have time so I don't pressure myself but hopefully you guys enjoy the next few Wednesdays where I'm going to be picking a few more of your OCs to draw. But for now I'm going to leave you guys with the cleaner time lapse and I'll come back when we talk about the third drawing. So some of you guys might remember this from last week from Saturday's video and this piece I really dislike so we are going to redo it and I kind of redid it completely so even though I usually keep a spare version of the sketch for me to kind of like kind of prep myself for something like this where I might want to tweak it or recolor it or something but I decided that I didn't even like my sketch for that one so I decided to redo it completely and I decided to switch it to landscape so that I could fit the hand the flute and the body more comfortably on the canvas instead of scrunching it in so I'm going to be cutting out a lot of footage because I did not record the entire session like I did for the previous two so I already did the sketch we are moving on to color. I'm adding different effects than before. The effects for the previous version was to cover up a lot of my mistakes and the things that I disliked, but me doing that kind of made me hate it even more. So I am being a little bit more mindful about picking what I'm using for effects and for embellishing the drawing. So for this one, I'm using a multiply layer to put the character into the environment. It helped also to put the character in shadow. I erased to reveal some highlights. I made a new layer, added an addition layer or an add layer so that we can do a little bit of glowing of the flute, which is one of the parts that I struggled with on the other piece because I was not very specific in terms of where the light was coming from and hitting the hands. So yeah, that's something I definitely learned that I wanted to make sure that it would come out kind of correct. Last but not least, we are on the rendering phase and I did take a little bit more time focusing on cleaning up things to make it look correct. But surprisingly, this only took me, I think, two hours and five minutes. And my previous session took me, I think, two hours and 58 minutes. So closer to three hours rather than this one taking only two hours. So yeah, this one turned out a lot better in my opinion and a less busy compared to this one. And hopefully... I don't know if it resembles the character more, but I definitely like the illustration a lot more and just like everything in general, the hands, the flute, the background. So yeah, I think it's an improvement and it's only been like, you know, three, four days. So yeah, just, you know, take your time. And if you don't like something, you can always redo it, I guess. But that's it for today's video. Thank you guys again for submitting your OCs and I'll be back next Wednesday with another batch of OCs. So I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.